uh, now also Zenidek Petzel from uh, uh, the Czech Republic, as the Czech uh, Republic has been one uh, growing hub uh, of car manufacturing over the past years. Uh, uh, so it would be interesting also to, to listen from you, Zenidek, about uh, uh, some of the, the, the risk that Enrico has highlighted, like that of uh, seeing R&D investment being cut, but also your view on uh, how the different parts uh, of the supply chain could be engaged uh, in more innovation, digitalization, including, of course, uh, uh, small businesses. Uh, thank you, Lucia. Uh, there are quite a lot of topics on the table, but um, uh, just first, uh, let me uh, briefly touch upon the two uh, main topics we discussed. Uh, you mentioned the impact of um, COVID crisis on the industry. And in the very beginning, uh, uh, your uh, colleague uh, uh, mentioned also uh, the connection between the developing regions and our industry. Uh, when it comes to, to impact of COVID crisis, uh, when you look, for example, at the production numbers uh, in the Czech Republic uh, for the first two months of uh, 2020, uh, we actually uh, had a growth of uh, production now when compared to the previous year, 2019. So um, I don't think it's uh, completely accurate to say that the industry was in trouble before uh, COVID and sort of uh, COVID helped it or actually helped to cover up some, some major structural issues. So uh, in my mind, it is not, uh, not necessarily true. But uh, then again, when it comes to, uh, to, to, to the real impact of COVID, I think the impact is pretty profound because the companies obviously had to step on a break when it comes to investment. And these days, uh, the ability to invest in improving of uh, your production in new production, in uh, new ways of uh, finding resources and um, sources of money and revenue that's obviously the, the sort of the biggest hindrance we have to deal right now as an automotive industry when it comes to uh, competitiveness of uh, European automotive industry versus uh, the automotive industry in other regions, uh, for example, especially in China, since uh, uh, the rise of electric vehicles has um, uh, eliminated the, the usual obstacle the, the foreign uh, manufacturers had, and that's the emission norms, that's the combustion engine technology that was uh, on really high level in Europe. So that's the first remark on, on COVID. I think the impact is huge, it's profound, and we uh, need to help our companies to keep up uh, the financing, keep up the cash flow, cash flow and uh, being able to invest uh, in those very hard uh, times that are ahead of us. Uh, the other quick remark, uh, remark I wanted to make um, was uh, towards the developing regions. Uh, when I had uh, uh, one of those preparatory talks in the last few days, uh, we, we tried to look at uh, what is the situation between the different regions within the Czech Republic itself. Uh, there are basically only two regions that you might call these days as developing, even though I don't think the, the term is uh, precise. Uh, it's Northern Bohemia and Northern Moravia, and the, and the reason being that uh, they had really strong industrial base uh, during the last 100 years, and now the, the strong industrial base is vanishing. I'm talking about coal production, I'm talking about steel production. Uh, so this actually tells us something. Uh, if uh, automotive industry is strong these days, it's strong in the Czech Republic, it's strong uh, across the whole of Europe, uh, we need to look at the industry to make sure that this industry doesn't vanish as well. Uh, otherwise, we will run in uh, large uh, issues in Europe in, in general. Uh, the trouble being that uh, for the moment, it's not uh, only that the industry has to produce something different than they had before. Um, speaking about the uh, internal combustion vehicles versus electric vehicles. Uh, imagine uh, a potato farmer that would from one day to another need to swap from potatoes to planting tomatoes. Okay, it's both, uh, both uh, growing up plants, but the conditions for those plants are different and you need to learn uh, the ways to the fine tuning of the production of those different plants. So that's something we are dealing right now. And it's not only that, it's also the change of the revenues. It's clear that the production itself for the future will not be enough to sustain uh, the operation in Europe. We'll need to look in different models. 
Uh, Sandy uh, from the States mentioned uh, uh, other revenues like mobility as a service, but that's not only uh, that's not the only um, possible sort of revenue. Obviously, the services that are related to uh, connected cars uh, that's that's a huge possibility. But then again, uh, it's, it's also one of the sort of the largest uh, uh, difficulty areas uh, I see right now. Even though it's not being uh, uh, discussed so much as uh, autonomous, uh, autonomous vehicles, as electric vehicles, but uh, becoming uh, not only a production company, becoming also a software company. That's a, a huge issue. It's a, it's a huge uh, shift of paradigm. Of, uh, of the way the employees are motivated, of the way how they work, uh, uh, how the production cycle uh, actually <laughs> goes on, because the, the production cycle is, uh, it's all, I was mentioned, it's quite long. It's uh, five years or so seven years, perhaps, for the passenger cars. Uh, when it comes to anything digital, five to seven years, it's uh, prehistoric. It just cannot go like that. So, so these are just a few remarks from my side uh, to the beginning. I'm open to any further uh, questions. Uh, thank you very much, Zenek, uh, uh, and, and thank you to, to, to all the panelists uh, of this second panel. Uh, 